Thank you, John. Um, I'm very fortunate to have had a very good teacher in Alan Bain. I'm the president of the American Scottish Foundation, and as many of you who know Alan know, um, he and Wayne Redford of the Chicago Scots really encouraged all of us to connect to Scotland, to help Scotland maybe understand what was going on for us in America. And um, we therefore hope that when our visitors come here um, and are with us here at the conference, they learn from us too. It's a two-way conversation. And um, so um, we believe very heartily at ASF that, we're, well, our mission is to be a bridge, and we try to do that both ways. And so um, one of the things that we have been very fortunate about is to have a growing relationship as a conference with the um, Scottish office in Washington, D.C., and with Visit Scotland. And they join us most years here um, and for the conference. And this year, the um, Rory Headley, who spoke with us last night, who is the second secretary for the Scottish Affairs Office for North America, um, is with us, and he is going to speak to us of all things Scottish government related, the journey across their activities, um, and it's a time for us to hear from him, to hear what is being planned and how they, uh, they want to help us understand the focus and the message that they are giving at this time. And so, Rory, over to you. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. The uh, the IT guys have given me this. It's got disaster written all over it. <laughs> Bear with me. Um, and Camilla was talking about um, building bridges and two-way learning. These are some fantastic bridges on the slide behind you. Um, you'll probably recognise them in the distance. The red one. We've got the fourth rail bridge. Then we've got the fourth road bridge, and then the the. Um, relatively young Queen's Ferry Crossing. Um, I was lucky enough to, the very first morning that opened, it was a day similar to that. Um, I got the opportunity to walk across it with the First Minister with, um, over the course of two days, 50,000 Scottish people. We had people coming from um, as far afield as New Zealand just to walk across the bridge. So it's truly spectacular. And I hope if you ever get the opportunity to go there um, and see it, there's a lovely um, viewing platform in Queen's Ferry where you can have a look at it. You just have to make sure that you get weather like that. Um, so, yeah, good morning, everybody. I think I'm just paying myself. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, it is great to be here with you. I have um, 15th meeting written down here because I took it from your website, but I'll, I'll trust your judgment, Gus. <laughs> Um, I hope you all enjoyed the dinner last night. It was great to uh, meet and speak with many of you. Um, I look forward to, to hearing all your views over the course of today. Um, my session this morning um, is going to be done in three parts. The first and second are hopefully going to go hand in hand. There will be some slides on the screen, so if you want to adjust to look at them and just listen to me, I'm absolutely okay with that. Um, and the third one, will I'll, I'll be um, taking the opportunity to answer some of your questions um, on the condition that they're easy. Um, <laughs> I decided to look at your theme um, of the next generation and combine that with our office's next generation um, to take you on a whistle-stop tour of everything that is going on as our footprint in the US and Canada uh, takes stock of its last 17 years. Um, that's the time that the office has had a physical presence this side of the Atlantic. Um, and our plans to take a step in what I would say is a new direction. Um, I hope that you understand where we're coming from um, and where we're going, and that the information I share with you this morning paves the way for collaboration with you all, um, and if nothing else, gives you a stronger awareness of the, the work that we're doing. Um, so I am going to move through the slides. Let's see if this works. Fingers crossed. There we go. Um, apologies for that being in white. Um, hopefully everybody will be able to read it, but I am going to I am going to talk you through it anyway. Um, so, firstly, I wanted to share a little background on myself and the teams operating uh, across the U.S. and Canada. Um, we, as some of you will be aware, have gone through somewhat of a transition in the last 12 months or so, um, and I must say I am quite optimistic about that transition, as it is an ideal time for a refresh of ideas. 
Uh, the biggest change in the Scottish Government's presence this side of the Atlantic is the addition of a senior member of the team being appointed to Ottawa. Um, so you can see Kat Little's name there as the first secretary. We welcomed Kat earlier this month, um, and I know she looks forward to engaging with you going forward. This change comes as a realisation that the, D, the DC office uh, could not appropriately support both the US and Canada markets. Um, there's only a few of us, as you can see up there, um, and you know the area that we cover is, is massive. Um, Chris Maskell, um, who I know attended the conference last year, will remain in Toronto um, as a direct support for Kat. He is basically the Canadian version of me. Um, he's obviously been here a lot longer than me and knows a lot more. Um, in DC this summer, um, I replaced Kate Perkins, um, whom I know all of you were fond of. Um, I'm 100% committed to continuing the good worker relationship she had with you all and hope to be able to strengthen that further. Um, as I mentioned last night, I joined the team directly from the First Minister's office, where I, I was in charge of an engagement strategy. I've worked around ministers for the last nine years and I've loved every single minute of it, from elections to referendums to EU negotiations in Brussels and Luxembourg, to visiting remote Scottish islands and eating a lot, and I mean a lot, of Scottish food and drink. Uh, I've had a varied and interest, a, a lot. Um, I just asked my waistline. I, I, I've had a varied and interesting career today, um, but I'm sure that, that my job out here um, is, is going to top all of that. And as if uh, those changes weren't enough, um, Shannon Hall, who I know, I think some of you will have dealt with, um, who was our long-time American project manager, um, has moved on to Pastures News. So Natasha, who is up here, um, is joining us as of Monday, and I could not be happier because carrying a vacancy in a team of four is not easy. Um, so Natasha will oversee a lot of our project work and will work with you all to support any events, projects that you would like um, us to be involved in as the Scottish Affairs Office. Um, a little bit of background on Natasha. She joins us having spent some time working in a range of areas, but most interestingly, she's recently spent time in Malawi educating tribes and their children about sexual health. So she has a varied experience um, and, and I'm really looking forward to Natasha uh, starting. And last but not least on this list, um, Tracy Starr. Um, a rather apt name, because she really is the star of the team, um, is our go-to person on all things logistical. She keeps us right, and for all of you, she holds the keys to the purse strings, so she's the person that you want to make sure that you're, you're getting your support from and, and that you're getting it on time. Um, each of the four of us in the US and the two uh, people up in Canada have a very much open-door policy to help and assist you in any way we can. Um, and I'll provide some contact details for everybody um, so that you have a direct route to us because we want, we want to hear from you about the events that you're doing and if we can support in any way possible. Um, so the changes to the team are now in trail and that gives us an opportunity to take stock and refresh our business plan, um, as I mentioned above. Scotland now has offices in key locations around the world. We've got our DC office, we have someone in Ottawa, someone in Toronto, we have a Beijing office, and just recently we've upped our footprint in Brussels, developed an office in Berlin, upped our footprint in Dublin, and most recently we've just put a team into Paris. Um, we've also developed a strong base in London at Scotland House. What that means is that all these teams have come together to work to an overarching set of objectives, which I'm going to put up here. So you don't need to dwell too much on what these mean, but I am going to just quickly touch on each of them. Um, these are international objectives that we take and apply to our own markets. So Scotland's international reputation has improved. Basically, we need to ensure that we're supporting our diaspora to sell Scotland to the world. That's, for us, that's including Highland Games, supporting the Tartan Day Parade, attending and supporting activity around Burns and St Andrews Day. So basically anything we can do to turn up and boast about Scotland. Um, investment to Scotland has increased. Um, so we're going to act as a one-stop shop to support our trade and investment colleagues at Scottish Development International, or SDI is the acronym that you might have heard. Um, working with them as opposed to an isolation of them, which has sometimes been the case. And we're basically going to help to lay the groundwork for future results. Those of you who know the trade area, Scottish Development International are target focused, which basically means that year to year they have a set of targets that they need to meet. What my office will do is they'll go in and they'll lay the foundations for a few years before that that will then lead to targets maybe four, five, six years down the line. 
Scottish businesses are trading internationally more effectively. So that's identifying opportunities for businesses to visit, attend and showcase at key conferences this side of the Atlantic and to ensure that the Scottish Government, Scottish Development International and Visit Scotland work as one team to share information and where appropriate allow for overlapping cross-working. I think too often confusion sets in about which of our teams operating in the market are responsible for what. Um, so my office is always happy to answer any questions on this and point people in the right direction. That can be anything from knowing who to contact to talk about something or knowing who to contact about funding for something. Um, it's been raised with me a few times since I've been out here that they're not quite, people are not quite sure which teams they need to go to. If there's ever any doubt, just ask me and I will point you in the right direction. Um, Scottish research and innovation capabilities promoted and further partnerships and funding secured. I know innovation was talked, on, uh, talked about in some remarks last night at the dinner. Um, this is about making sure that we put Scotland's success stories front and centre. Um, to give you an example, I was recently supported, uh, supporting our energy minister, um, Paul Wheelhouse, at a five-day climate summit hosted by Governor Brown and Michael Bloomberg in San Francisco. Um, people will know Scotland's climate change story. Um, the conference allowed us to ensure that Scotland's leadership in climate change was shown on an international scale. There's a lot of positive contributions Scotland is making in that area, and it's our job to ensure they are represented in the US. So as and when a, a flagship policy of the Scottish Government has the opportunity out here, we will absolutely be doing all we can to promote it on an international scale. Scotland's interests in the EU and beyond are protected and enhanced. Well, there's a rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> this, <laughs> uh, everywhere I go, people want to talk about Brexit nightmare. Um, this is done through um, engaging the right people, so whether that be at political, business or educational levels, um, and actually a little bit of work is underway to do this. I'll touch on these connections a little bit further shortly, but if you are there sitting thinking, I have a great idea on how sc the Scottish Government can meet some of these objectives, I'm all ears, I'd welcome the discussion, either in the realms of this conference or indeed by email or phone or in person, I'll buy you a beer, coffee, meal, Whatever you need, um, if you've got uh, if you've got um, suggestions for us, I am, it's it's very much a, an open ear policy. We'll call it. Um, I guess the sad fact is that we'll not be able to do everything given our limited number um, and our resource in country. Um, but we are committed to doing all that we, all that we can. Um, and as I mentioned last night, that's why I'm currently flying around more than Superman, um, making sure I get to as many um, engagement opportunities as I can. So I'm just going to move on. So we're now, um, I just want to give you a flavour of a few things. Um, there is no sense to this list, but I do want to talk uh, through them. So what's been going on? Well, there's a wealth of activity, the length and breadth of the country that is happening. And I know a lot of you in this room are working to support events um, of all varieties, but I just wanted to highlight these. So Edinburgh to Boston direct air route. The only reason I put that on that list is it was announced yesterday. Um, so that's, that, that's great. And any of you who have actually been through Edinburgh Airport will now know that it's functioning as a five-star airport. Um, it, it, it's really um, something special. And I've seen the transition from the massive queues to no queues at all. So um, it's great that, that, that we're um, encouraging uh, companies such as Delta to invest um, in that air route. Um, and they all, United also put a route into DC, which is ideal for me. Um, Fair Saturday, so an initiative that has been set up to promote culture in particular locations and, and one which Scotland is the flag, flagship example of, um, basically because the Scottish Government has put support behind it. Um, Fair Saturday falls uh, the last Saturday of November, so just after Black Friday. Um, and the synergies chime well um, with St Andrews and St Andrews Day because it's about doing something kind. So just now there's a range of events in Scotland where families can enjoy cultural events and where those putting on these events donate a proportion of the money to charitable causes. Um, the reason I wanted to flag that is that the founder, um, Jordi, is currently um, in the US just now engaging with key cities to try and get them to deliver programmes in 2019. Um, I'll keep you all updated on how, uh, on how he gets on, but there may be an opportunity to, for some of you to tie your St Andrew's Day activity um, in future years to this fantastic initiative. Um, 
It's grown exponentially in the last few years, and now they're actually partnering with um, an organisation in Scotland called Social Bite. Um, some people might be aware of what that is, but Social Bite is a is a initiative set up by a gentleman called Josh Littlejohn, where they raise awareness of um, homeless people or rough sleeping, to call it. And every December, they get chief executives from the biggest companies around Scotland to actually sleep outside. Now, December in Scotland, sleeping outside is is no mean feat, and they are raising hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pounds. Um, and actually, last year, that money went towards a small project in in Edinburgh, where they've developed. Um, sheltered accommodation for homeless people to get them back on track where they can stay for up to six months um, before transitioning back into society. It's a fantastic um, initiative and one that I know that he's going to try and roll out in the US going forward. Um, so keep your eyes open for that. Um, and if you know any rich chief executives that you want to, to um, send out to sleep outside in, in freezing temperatures, then we'll also keep that in, in the back of your mind. Um, SDI leadership. So I've touched a little bit on Scottish Development International. Um, there's been a shuffle of staff there as well, and I'm not going to go into too much detail on it, other than to say that Michelle Sim, who's based out of our Boston office, has taken over Raymond, who was in our Toronto office, um, as the head of the North American network. Um, Again, this is welcomed at a time when we're refreshing our sort of one Scotland approach. Um, we'll work closely with Michelle and team going forward to ensure the full potential of engagement opportunities is captured. Alumni. So when I came out here, we, both myself and Joni as the head of the office and Chris and Kat in Canada doing the same thing. One thing that was apparent that was our offices were probably spreading ourselves too thin and as a result of that, making little or no impact. Um, and what we decided to do was to focus on some key priority areas so that in four years when we have to go back to rainy Scotland um, and the new team come out, we have a legacy to pass on, we have the relationships to pass on. Um, and then that team coming out here can manage those relationships but also set their own objectives. Um, so it's basically building the foundations. And alumni is, is one of the projects that I'm going to focus on um, over the coming months. Um, whilst in its infancy, we hope to establish positive working relationships with all those alumni who want to keep an affiliation to Scotland. That begins at home with our higher education institutions, but we already know groups who have started off their own back. Um, I'm, I recently met somebody in Texas. Coincidentally, I was sitting at a dinner, and he said that he had reached out to a few people who had gone to Heriot Watt University who were now living and working in the Houston area. In four weeks, he had 300 members wanting to engage. That is unbelievable. We didn't know about it, we do now. These are networks that we want to harness. They're young, dynamic people. We can offer them the ability to support them at conferences. They want our involvement. So if you do know of any of these networks, please do let us know. Um, so yes, that, that, that's very much um, front and center um, of our office in terms of our alumni engagement. Um, our First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, um, for those of you who know the First Minister's international travel schedule, I know that. Uh, you'll be aware that in 2019, um, again, we hope to, to host the FM in the US, and I believe that um, there's discussions just now that she will also go to Canada, um, given the fact that we are opening our office, officially opening our office in, in Ottawa. Um, but what I will say is this will not be around uh, the Tartan Day Parade, because those of you who are looking at a calendar will understand that that is actually week one of Brexit. Um, but let's not go down that rabbit hole again. Um, we'll no doubt engage with some of you um, when that time comes. And then finally, well, not finally, but the final one on this list, um, the caucus. So we have a Friends of Scotland caucus um, in DC. Um, and as we approach the midterms, we're looking for a refresh. Some of our members are standing down. That aside, we're always looking to our new membership. So if you have any links to any of your state representatives and think they may be interested in joining the caucus, do let us know. Um, and I just want to add a couple of things to the bottom of that list, um, which you might be interested to know. So a discussion that we were having last night, um, the Premier of Outlaw King 
um, a film by Netflix completely shot in Scotland and all the post-production work done in Scotland premiered in Scotland last night. Um, and Mary Queen of Scots, um, which is Mm, this whispers about Oscar nominations um, will launch shortly. These are two films in the TV and film and screen space in Scotland that are going to be blockbusters. This is a, it's a direction that our culture secretary and international secretary Fiona Hislop wants to take us so that you probably will see over the next few years Scotland pushing itself in the screen industry. So again, if there's any opportunities there or um, any suggestions that you want to send my way, then again, I'm um, happy to have that discussion. So, Outlaw King. So it's Chris Pine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, uh, the First Minister hosted him in Edinburgh Castle last night. I think it was a, it was a success. Um, but you've all seen Outlander. You know the landscapes in Scotland are ideal for this. Um, so, some of you may recognise this hashtag along the top of the screen, um, but th for those of you who don't, uh, let me explain. The Scottish Government, Scottish Development International, Scottish Enterprise, University of Scotland, Visit Scotland, and along with other partners, have joined forces to create one brand that focuses on four pillars, so live and work, study, invest, and visit. Um, this new collaborative effort will harness our national story, our technology, our talent, for all of Scotland's benefit to stimulate international growth. We know we have great products, world-renowned universities, top talent, incredible history and landscapes, warm hospitality, entrepreneurial spirit, and a high quality of life matched with affordable living. The list goes on and on, and I could stand here for hours reeling that list off. But this new campaign, which is Scotland is now, not Scotland I Snow, is a get, getting pointed out to me. Uh, Scotland is now will showcase these products to the world. Scotland is a bold and positive country, rich in history and heritage, but forging forward in a new way that is progressive, pioneering and inclusive. I hope that we, I hope as we bring Scotland's story to the world, all of those in this room will help to promote it and put it at the top of everyone's list. I'm going to shortly show you some more information about show you where you can find some more information about this. But I do want to take the opportunity to show you a quick video. Um, there is some Scots language in it, so I'm going to, it's only a minute long. I'm going to ask them to play it twice. Um, and I'd like everybody to just pay attention because, well, let, let's just watch it and, uh, and, and I hope you all enjoy. And I don't have to do anything, right? <laughs> There would have been no chance if I'd had to do this myself. I'd have been coming around showing you on my phone. Now is a place where hope is there sound? Now is compassion and freedom to roam. Can we put it back to the start and then put the sound bar up at the on the far right? Now is a place where hope calls home. Now is compassion and freedom to roam. Now builds bridges, now breaks down walls. Now is new thinking, now gives its all. Now is the heart, the soul and the head. Now is the town you'll want to paint red. Now makes the future, now bangs the drum. Now is the welcome for all those who come. Now is silence and breathtaking sights. Now bucks the trend. Now fights for rights. Now is new jobs. Now inspires youth. Now faces up to an inconvenient truth. Now more than ever is what the world needs. Now is the hope that our country feeds. There is no waiting. Scotland is now. And it, guys, if you could, thank you. I'll talk a little bit more about this material in a second, but if we can just play it again, I just want to draw your attention to a couple of the things that are in it. Um, so I will commentate a little bit over the top of it, just so people know what's going on. 
Now is a place the, Hardy, the Glenfinnan Viaduct, home. which is Harry Potter's. Now is compassion and freedom to roam. Now builds bridges. Now breaks down walls. Now is new thinking. Now gives its all. Now is the heart, the soul, and the head. The kale face. Now is the town you'll want to paint red. Now makes the future. Now bangs the drum. Now is the welcome for all those who come. Now is silence and breathtaking sights. Now that's the v and in Dundee that's just opened. Now fights for rights. Now is new jobs. Now inspires youth. Now faces up to an inconvenient truth. Now more than ever is what the world needs. Now is the home and the baby box initiative, which is is uh, world leading. There is no waiting. Scotland is now. Okay, thanks for thanks for your attention there. Um, I showed you that twice. I mean, I never tire of watching the video. Um, still makes my hair stand on end a little bit. Makes me feel very patriotic and proud to come from such a place. Um, and I'm sure as my, my time living in the US, um, it'll make me feel a little bit homesick at some point. Um, and that video was obviously shot on the one day that it doesn't rain. Uh, that video is actually available on YouTube if any of you want to watch it. Um, and some of our images ignore my artistic ability, um, are available for use through the Scotland Is Now toolkit. Um, so if you'd like to be on our distribution list or pointed in the right direction to receive some of that material, then we're absolutely happy to do that. Um, what I will say is that our marketing team in Scotland, who are combined between Visit Scotland, Scottish Development International and the Scottish Government, put together packages around Scotland is now, so they're just about to launch their St Andrew's Day package and it'll be material all focused on St Andrew's Day. We've got Year of Young People material, we have business material, we'll have Burns material, and it's all readily accessible for you guys to use. All you need to do is visit the website. You can download it to your laptops. The only thing that it'll ask for is what you're using it for, and that's just so that we can gather some data. There's no money involved. Um, and if you can show videos like that, it beats listening to somebody like me. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. And again, I just want to give you a snapshot of where Scotland is in 2018. And I'm going to draw your attention to um, a few of these um, because I get that people in the back might not be able to read them all. Um, so right in the bottom left, uh, five of our universities in the top 200 in the world. Um, I understand this week it might now only be four, but we'll, we'll stick with five. Um, and American students actually make up the second biggest number, second only to China. Um, bottom left, second, uh, yeah, bottom second from the left, um, access to the world. So I mentioned that Boston is now confirmed, um, and I know that we are working hard on the southeast, and I hope in the next 12 months that we will be making progress with a direct flight to Atlanta. Um, just above that, the Scottish Government's initiative around gender balance um, is one that we are growing as part of our equalities agenda, um, and it's growing very much in the right direction. A lot of you will think that in 2018 it's utterly ridiculous that we should even need to take these measures, but we do, um, and we are. You'll have seen that in the First Minister announcing a gender balanced cabinet. Uh, I can't even read that. Um, so, uh, bottom second from the right, um, so the one that's just got the Scotland title above that. Um, probably the most heartening statistic on here is our support for those who need it most. Um, giving people a safer way to progress or start over their lives. Um, I've heard firsthand from some of them, and it's truly amazing to hear how grateful they are they are to Scotland, the place that they're now happy to call home. For the people who can't read that in the back, it's that Scotland has welcomed over 2,000 refugees. Um, it's an open door policy. We're happy to help where we can. Um, and I'm sure on the bottom right there, I'm sure you'll all agree that uh, Scotland was actually voted the most beautiful country in the world, even when it's raining. Um, I know I keep making rain jokes, but yeah, my material is pretty rubbish. Um, so this is just scraping the surface of what we can celebrate. Um, and as our Scotland is now campaign progresses, we will be sharing more and more information, photos and videos. Um, I urge you all to help us promote this. 
if you do put, happen to put the hashtag Scotland is now into Twitter, it will bring up the activity that's been going on that week. You'll be able to look back at what's gone on in the past. But for example, around the Edinburgh Fringe Festivals, if you'd put hashtag Scotland is now into Twitter, it would have automatically populated you with videos from the festival. So even if you can't make the journey uh, to visit and, and be part of it, you can watch the videos um, uh, online. So finally, I just want to bring up the last slide, um, which is very, very boring. Um, and I'll leave it here for a few moments in case anybody wants to take um, a copy of our details. Um, I've also got some business cards that I'm more than happy to hand out um, if you, you want to get in contact with me. I'm not going to drag on the presentation side um, any longer because I want to have the opportunity to have a discussion with you all um, and answer some of your questions. But I do want to say once again a huge thank you to all of you for what you do for Scotland. We really wouldn't be anything out here without you. Um, we are here to help, support and work with you and I look forward to our friendship developing. Um, on that note, I'm happy to open the floor to questions and happy to provide further information. One disclaimer. Two disclaimers. One, if I don't have the answer, I will absolutely get you an answer. And two, if I happen to express an opinion, it is my personal opinion and not one of the Scottish governments. This is more administrative. I wondered if there's a possibility to get a, a printout or an email of your slideshow that of has course. all of the addresses and names and everything so we don't have to write them all down. Yes, um, just to, to bore you, um, I can send the presentation. I will have to send the video as a separate attachment because we are on FCO, Foreign Commonwealth Computers, and they don't let you send massive emails. Stupid, I know. But I can absolutely send the presentation to you to use. Um, and I'll also, I can send you the website that will give you further information about all these videos and images that people can use, or even if you just want to browse through them. Very good. What we would like to do is be able to place a lot of this information on our website here at uh, DetroitScots.com. So I presume that would be uh, okay to do. Absolutely, there's okay. no propriety issues around some of this, uh, any of this information. And um, like I said, when if you, I can share the information that I've just shown you, but if you want to add other stuff, then you can absolutely extract it from the Scotland Is Now Toolkit. Like I said before, you just have to tell them why you're using it, and that's just for data collection. Excellent, thank you. I know that the First Minister is well aware of the Scottish diaspora in Canada, but I'm wondering, is she also aware of how large the Scottish diaspora is in the U.S., and would she come here uh, after she goes to Canada next year? In a, in a word, yes. Um, so one of the things that we are doing, um, and it's partly because both myself and Joni, who's the head of our office, previously had working relationships with the First Minister. But we are doing almost monthly reporting back to Scotland. And what that means is that we are given an account of the activity that we're doing in the US and Canada directly back to our international ministers and the First Minister herself. Um, unfortunately, I don't wear the hat of her um, engagement strategist anymore. Um, but I understand that the program will involve some Canada travel and some um, most likely East Coast travel, but timing to be confirmed, so watch this space. But as always, we'll be re we will reach out to our networks to, to see if they want to, to engage, um, whether that's through a dinner or a conference or a meeting or whatever it may be. Uh, yes, sir. L last night uh, you shared with me some, I thought, outstanding information concerning the Scottish non-fossil energy uh, activity, you yes. might uh, quickly uh, address that to this group. Yeah, so um, a few points. Um, some of you in the room will know Scotland's amazing climate change story um, underpinned by our renewable energy story. Um, and that comes full circle to when I was talking about um, visiting California um, with our energy minister just recently to promote renewables. Um, so let me put that in a US context for a second. We are now trying to establish relationships with states who want to be in the renewable uh, energy space. Um, they will learn from Scotland. We have our first, we have the world's first floating offshore wind farm, um, which is just off of Inverness, um, which is truly something special. You saw the wind turbines in the video um, and 
We have also now got hydro or tidal power um, underway. Um, Scotland's climate change commitments basically mean that we are moving towards 100% renewable energy. Um, currently, we source 63% of our energy in Scotland from renewable energy. So um, it, it's the future, folks. Um, I have a question on the um, one of the objectives you said was that to make sure Scottish businesses are trading internationally. Yes. Uh, what types of businesses are you are you focused on, and do you? And another part of that question is, um, what sort of focus uh, does the Scottish government have on um, helping small businesses to succeed in the global marketplace? Absolutely. So. Um, at a high level, we have our trade body operating in the US and Canada, which is Scottish Development International, and they are very much the experts in that field. And basically, they operate in the trade and investment space, so they look for investment into Scotland, but they also help um, Scottish companies break into the market across here. Um, Domestically, we have a lot of initiatives um, that the government has set to help small businesses um, and SDI, working alongside their partner organisation, Scottish Enterprise, work with these small businesses on a day-to-day -day basis to allow them um, to get into market. Now, that can be in the form of bringing them out on trade missions to try and establish the footprint in the US or advising them on um, what markets might be available to them. We actually have Scottish Development International uh, Scottish Development International offices in the US which have an incubator platform within their offices. Um, what that means um, is that we can bring out small businesses and they can base themselves within the Scottish Development International offices until they have their footprint established in the US. That obviously goes to saving on all of their overheads and, and, and allowing them to hit the ground running. And it also means that if for any reason that they're not successful, that they don't return with a lot of debt and, and failed responsibility. We, we um, Houston is the, the office where I've seen this firsthand and we have companies in there just now um, focusing on a range of sectors. To come back to you on that, um, so again, our Scottish Development International offices are spread geographically, but they are there are experts in each of those offices that focus on particular areas, whether it's um, life sciences, food and drink, the energy sector, financial services. We, we have most bases covered. Does that answer your question? Uh, two things. Uh, first off, thanks for getting that uh, picture of the Isle of Egg in your video. I appreciate that very much. It's a lovely place. I keep having conversations about egg. It, it comes up all the time. And secondly, uh, you mentioned the caucus, and I'm wondering if there's a possibility, and this may be something we should talk about tomorrow, of hosting this conference in Washington, D.C., so this group, whoever they are next year or the years ahead, could meet with members of the caucus. As I said, I have an open door policy, so any suggestions that we are more than happy to consider. Um, obviously, it just needs to, factors such as timing and availability need to be factored in, but I, I'm not going to shoot that down from the get-go. I'm absolutely happy to have that conversation. I'm going to hand the mic to a prospective host. <laughs> yeah, hi. Um, I'm John Belisai from Washington, D.C., and I know a number of you. <clears throat> One of the hats I wear there is as an officer of, of a nonprofit called the National Capital Tartan Day Committee, and our single mission is to promote the Tartan Day holiday every year, and we work together with the uh, Friends of Scotland Caucus and the Congress, and so that is the kind of long answer to the question. There has been for about 15, 16 years a caucus in the House of Representatives, one in the Senate as well, but the one in the House is very active. Um, <clears throat> bipartisan is one of the few things that everybody agrees on, made up of Republicans and Democrats of Scottish heritage descent. <clears throat> they join. There's Republican and Democratic co-chairs, and they work in also with the Scottish government. So they host groups of American legislators that go to Canada, uh, go to Scotland, Scottish legislators that come to America, and they also work with us on the Tartan Day holiday and other things. So that is the caucus, and uh, it's, I think, um, been a very successful way to get people at the governance level talking to each other. Thank you. And just to follow on from that, we actually took a, a group of um, staffers to uh, congressmen and senators to Scotland this summer to let them further their understanding of 
Scottish political system, um, Scottish businesses, Scottish tourism, basically what Scotland's offer to the world is. Wearing one of the hats that uh, I had previously is uh, I served on the University of Michigan Alumni Board, and I know that one of the difficulty a lot of alumni chapters have is finding a place to meet regularly. And I know that was one of the things we wanted to do with our mix and mingle thing tonight is to offer that as an opportunity for alumni to come. Um, as you pursue that, you may want to give thought to something like for us here at the St. Andrews Society of Detroit, this might be an excellent venue for Detroit area alumni of Scottish universities to gather monthly. I mean, that's something, you know, we, we extend the use of our facility to a number of organizations um, who have some Scottish affiliation uh, to use this. I mean, the Country Dance Organization uses our facility. They're not, they're not necessarily our members or affiliated with us. We, we have Highland Dance uh, uh, instruction that occurs here. So, you know, that's something, you know, I would suspect there are other, Chicago as well, where we have venues where we might be able to assist you in organizing those chapters by simply giving them a place to meet. If Even if you've supplied us with the names, Great. we might be able to reach out and help you organize that. So give that some thought That's as you proceed. That's a very kind offer, and, and as I prog progress the agenda around alumni, I will absolutely consider okay. that. I think that you're right. I think that... Um, having the facilities to be able to meet um, is, is one of the first steps that needs to be taken and a facility as fantastic as this is absolutely um, the right place to do that. So thank you very much for that offer. And, and I would be remiss to say that alumni status will be some sort of distraction this afternoon as the Wolverines proceed to make haggis of the Spartans. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rory, one of the problems um, that we've run in, in New York um, around the parade, we have really worked with the universities to encourage them to develop their alumni. We now have like four, 12 to 14 of the universities who march and then use it. The thing that we I was amazed when you said that Harriet Watt had managed through a person to galvanize 30 alumni down in Texas. Because of all the constraints... 300. 3,300. 3, 3, Sorry. Three, it sounds uh, massive in comparison to what one uh, lands up with. Um, because there's such controls over the ability to reach out directly to the alumni. And therefore, it's really important to get these leaders to be allowed to go after the alumni. That's been a little bit of a challenge um, for us up here. St. Andrews runs themselves, St. Andrews University, independently, but a lot of the other ones are very governed by their chapters back at home. Correct, and that, that point is, is absolutely not lost on me. So what I will say in the Texas context was that um, the the reach out to, to get the members to join was done by uh, an ex-student of Heritage Watt University off his own back. A lot of the people were actually found through Facebook and LinkedIn. That's basically how he generated his membership. Um, coming back to the actual alumni networks and, and how they're controlled by our higher in education institutions, in the world of GDPR, and I'm not bore you with what that means, basically we can't just access these lists, but um, what I am doing is I'm slowly but surely working our, our, my way around the 19 higher education institutions in Scotland to find out who their recruitment people are, who their alumni people are, if they have a physical pr footprint in the US. And I'm having a conversation, or I will be having a conversation with all of them to try and get their buy-in because they will benefit as much well, from us in having that relationship as we will from having and, the relationship and, and with them. We, we share what we have as well. Um, but then secondly, to John's point, I think that we'd all welcome a lot more people because we open up the, the these Tartan Day um, celebration down in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol to visitors and to guests. And so we'd welcome um, other people joining and, and having the opportunity to interact with the caucus at that time. 
the more the merrier. I'm, I, as it, just staying with the alumni point for a second there as well, though, it's not an overnight fix, and it's probably something that's still going to be ongoing when I have to return to Scotland in four years, but we need to start establishing a footprint. We need to know who these networks are. We need to know how we use these networks and how they can use us so that there is a partnership there going forward. I mean, some of these alumni people will go on to be some of the greatest minds in the world, and we need to be able to harness that potential. They're already going out there and acting as informal ambassadors of Scotland, telling people how much they had, how much fun they had while they were in Scotland, probably going back and visiting regularly, either with their Scottish friends or just to see the places that they've been. If they're already operating here, it's just identifying them and tapping into that potential. That we need that it's really something that we need to do, and like I say, there is n absolutely no right answer or quick fix to that. Hello, I'm with Clan Macaulay. We're having our next uh, worldwide clan gathering next September in Aviemore, and of of the many hats I wear, I'm also the clan organizer. I've been working with the folks at the Clan Event Fund, uh, but do you have any programs uh, outside of Scotland to help get the word out? Because 90% of our attendees are from outside the UK. So what I would say is a lot of our communication channels are done through social media. Um, so we have a Scott Gov America's Twitter account. Our, our sister offices around the world have them. Um, and obviously we have core um, messaging services in Scotland. Um, if you want us to promote, we absolutely can. However, what's within my control is that I would only be able to promote that message within the US and Canada. It's just the market that we have access to, unfortunately. Um, but if you want to discuss with Visit Scotland colleagues, they might have an opportunity for you to spread the message further afield, and I'm happy to share details with who the contact people are for that. No problem. Yes, yeah, speaking of Visit Scotland, <clears throat> I'm wondering if you could talk to them and have them somehow um, help provide funds to connect over here for possible uh, tours. Um, I have a friend from Ireland that did a food tour in Ireland. Um, Scotland would be wonderful. We have the best Scottish bakery in the area in Michigan and Megan Ack in the U.S. I'm sorry, Megan, <laughs> of which Megan Ackroyd is the owner. We have her here today. Point but in the direction I'm going now. Yeah, they're wonderful, and people don't know about it. And it's my biggest complaint is people seem to know everything Irish and not enough Scottish. And with Visit Scotland being the premier group to try and get people over there, I think tours, if farm, tours of farmers, they need to reach out to farmers to go visit, uh, engineers for all the wonderful engineering things that Scotland does, and food tours. Uh, things like that, but it all takes money and for people to go it has to be a reasonable cost So I feel if Visit Scotland can get some pounds together and uh, cough up a couple to help out uh, smaller businesses like Megan said uh, um, Tour groups small tour groups that would promote the economy over there Okay um there's a few points I want to, to make in that. Um, I guess the first point is that, um, and you'll hear this, and it's it's not meant to sound like an excuse, that Visit Scotland, Scottish Government, Scottish Development International, they have very, very limited budgets. That That's just a fact. Um, it's the world that we live in nowadays. And they can't, they can't help to promote everything. Food and drink is obviously um, Scotland's biggest um, export now, so it's very much a, a sector that I know that they're focused on. Um, and whilst I can't speak for Visit Scotland, I know that they are branching out beyond selling golf and whiskey and, and castles. Um, you made the comparison with Ireland, and I hear that quite a lot. They have significant resource. They have a, significant, a much bigger footprint in the US um, and I like to think that Scotland punches above its weight in the US and Canada in terms of how little resource they have, but the impact that they have. Um, Ireland have signi a significantly bigger footprint out here, so of course they're going to achieve more. Um, but you're right, and we, we, need to support, we need to support these businesses. So I guess what, I, what I'll say to the whole room is that you need to let us know about this information. Um, I can't say that we'll do it all, 
In fact, I would say that 75% of the information that comes through us, we won't be able to support with funds. Um, but there's a lot of other activity we can do, whether that's pushing it on social media, working with you to support initiatives, um, attending events, just to draw awareness to, to the uh, existence of these businesses and, and these areas. Sorry, that, that, that's probably not the answer that you were after, but unfortunately we live in a world with uh, increasing demand on, on our budgets. Yep. Just, just one at a time. Hi there. Um, my name is Nicola Phillips, and this is not a question, but uh, more of a response and an answer to yours. Uh, I run a travel company called Sojourners Travel, and uh, we are uh, busy promoting Scottish travel. Uh, we actually uh, specialize in groups and I work with Visit Scotland, we're certified with them. Visit Scotland are a fantastic resource, they've been so helpful and uh, you know I don't have any questions about Visit Scotland because the resources available are so very good and uh, we've had a fantastic response. I run all sorts of tours for groups, food and drink tours, whiskey tours, golf tours, uh, everything. You'll see my brochures in the uh, packets there. Yeah, that's it. And so if I can uh, help anybody uh, take a group over to Scotland, that's what my business does. And it does help increase participation within your clubs and organizations as well. So. Hi, I'm Dave. I'm with the House of Scotland in San Diego, California. I'm the Vice President of Membership there. Can you invite me down there, please? Yes, actually, <laughs> I was going to have a conversation with you later on. You went to L.A., but you didn't go to San Diego, so. No, we went uh, up instead of down, unfortunately. That's fine. Uh, San Diego is way down there, so. Uh, a consideration for you. Uh, you mentioned the uh, alumni network. You mentioned um, Scotland, um, you know, Travel Scotland, Visit Scotland. Um, in all, and you mentioned St. Andrew's Societies. In all of that, I never heard anything about the Highland Games, which is a, a network of very active um, Scottish participation, piping, drumming, heavy athletics, all the clans are there. A tent at Scottish um, Games, Highland Games, as they occur around the country, uh, might be something that the alumni network could uh, engage in. I know out in, out in California, the piping season, if I could relate it to piping, starts in February with the Scottish Highland Games at the um, HMS Queen Mary in Long Beach, uh, a part of LA. And then there's Phoenix, there's Costa Mesa, there's Ventura, there's San Diego, there's Sacramento, um, there's uh, uh, WASPABA, the Western United States Piping Band uh, Committee has their headquarters in Utah. So there's a lot of Highland Games going on there. I know there's Highland Games all over the US, but something to consider that a tent somewhere near the clan section at each of the Highland Games might be something that the Alumni Network could leverage to uh, promote Scotland. Absolutely, um, and I guess that was something that was in the back of my mind. Um, you've actually made me just want to buy a tour bus and just go around all the Highland Games, so. Um, but I was in, uh, so I was at the Seaside Highland Games in uh, Ventura last week. Um, it was the first Highland Games I've been to in the US, and um, it was truly eye-opening. I was amazed at the pipe bands. I was amazed at the clans. Um, I was amazed that there was haggis on offer. Um, we actually listened to a pipe band that were a grade three winner at the national uh, international pipe band championships. Um, they were from Pasadena. Unbelievable. Um, you're right, and I think that we need to we need to. Um, sell the Highland Games to the alumni networks and say that this is an opportunity for you to be able to engage um, with more people. And I think it all comes back to awareness. And as you can imagine, a lot of these alumni people are working, probably working very long hours. They might be in remote areas. They might be unaware of Highland Games. They might not realize that Highland Games are very much in the 2018 world rather than something that maybe a traditional um, person would have a view of the Highland Games. Um, and, and just anecdotally, when I was at the Seaside Highland Games, when I was watching the actual sport side of it, the women were the most impressive. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. And the person who was commentating on it, also a woman, deserves a job on ESPN because she was fantastic. She knew everything about it. Um, so I guess awareness, um, and I think that once people buy into that, 
they'll understand how strong a mechanism that is to, to promote their messages, to build their networks, and to, to just engage with people who want to celebrate um, Scottish culture, Scottish heritage. Um, so yes, absolutely something that uh, we'll consider. Um, as I said, we're in our infancy in terms of our alumni approach, um, but these are all things that, uh, that, that we need to factor in going forward. Um, speaking on behalf of Bob Crichton, who is uh, president of the New Hampshire Highland Games or d d uh, um, at Loon Mountain, we actually did do a Scottish village tent and had an alumni area to it. And we invited some of the alumni, and they did send information, um, and a couple of them did run their areas and things, but there was a lot of interest from younger people wanting to know how could they study in Scotland, and that was the other part to this. So it wasn't just about yeah. attracting the alumni in there, it was actually that they wanted to know about studying in Scotland. So I think there's a, a larger, bigger thing that yeah. could really be sold to the universities to understand that this could be useful to them. And that's why when I'm engaging with the higher education institutions in Scotland, that it's, I'm doing that in parallel between the, their alumni people and their recruitment people because they, they're not one and the same, but they, they run alongside each other and they need to continue to run alongside each other. And if you're trying to recruit, what better way than to put alumni who have been to that university in the same room as the people who are looking to go and study there? and being a real life walking, talking example of just how good it was to go and study in Scotland. <clears throat> Hi, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll try to keep this short, which is not my strong suit, but um, I might have a kind of a parochial approach to this, but I wanted to jump on Peg's bandwagon here about um, increasing awareness of our Scottish heritage within our own village. And <clears throat> here in Detroit, I mean, we're coming up on all the lists now for top 10 places to visit. And of course, the historic Eastern Market is always on the top of that list, just saying. Um, and uh, my phone is ringing. Oh, it's work. And uh, also, there are so many tours in Detroit now, and we are one of the most visited cities in the United States from uh, Germany, um, Japan, and I can't remember where else, but a lot of European, European people come here. Amsterdam, they're coming here and they're doing, because we've turned into quite a foodie town. Um, our museums are tops. <clears throat> our public art is out of this world. And our, of course, our farmer's markets are awesome. So we can, yeah, and, and our Highland Games are tops. Kathy's right over there. Our Highland Games are tops in the country. So it would be, it, it would, the groundwork would already be laid for the St. Andrew Society of Detroit to get on board with a local agency who's already providing tours in Detroit. My, that's the city of my heart and my love. And put a Scottish themed tour together and especially one with the first Saturday in August where people could also come to our Highland Games. And, you know, things like that are, you know, the, like I said, the groundwork's already there, and that would, um, you know, you don't have to be Scottish to do that. You could be Scottish inclined, as you said. So um, I think that that would be a great idea. The problem is, just like Visit Scotland doesn't have a lot of money, I mean, we're a volunteer group you know, with 20% of the people doing 120% of the work. So, you know, but those are the ideas that we can build on, and that increases the transfer of our knowledge, like our theme says. So one more question. How many here would like to meet an actor from the Outlaw King? Are there quite a few people? Yeah. Did you know we have one here? Really, yes, Jamie McKeachin. <laughs> Jamie was an actor in the film. Well, he was a he was an extra. Yeah, he was in it. <laughs> that counts. That counts. That counts. That's right. It does. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> very, very. Good. Yeah, lucky you. I was waiting for it.
Hi. Hello, good morning everybody. Uh, yes, yeah, so I was, I was an extra, or as we like to say, a supporting artist. <laughs> there was hundreds of us, we queued for about six hours outside the Kelvin Hall um, Museum to be a part of it and what a privilege it is. Um, it's released on 9th November, it's fantastic. Um, arguably the, the greatest star in it is of course Scotland, you know, the, the background, uh, the natural beauty of it and I think it's going to do a lot of good for uh, tourism in Scotland uh, as well as the Mary Queen of Scots film Will. Um, and certainly uh, they're doing a limited uh, run uh, in Scottish cinemas which I think is key, you know, it's all very well that it's going to be on Netflix, but um, encouraging people in Scotland to, to come out uh, and, and, and be together and, and watch um, a film that, that celebrates Scotland, um, I think is, is key for increasing uh, community back home. Um, but uh, it's out 9th November, and um, I think you're going to love it. Um, what an experience it was for me, certainly. Thank you, Jamie. Jamie's going to be on a, uh, on a panel this afternoon. One more question, and then we're going to we'll take a little short break before we continue. So I have a question in the same vein as um, Outlaw King, and you were talking about Mary Queen of Scots. What is being done in the U.S. to help promote these films, help promote Scotland, um, Scottish culture, and whatnot? Um, as someone who owns a Scottish bakery, I have a little biasness behind this question, but um, it, you know, there's only so much that I can do as a small business owner when it comes to licensing and things like that. I can't really get... In, um, I've tried getting involved with Outlander stuff, and Sony Sony is well aware of anyone doing anything with their brand. So how does a small business get involved in, in things like this? How do we get on their radar to help Scotland get on everyone else's radar in a really positive way? So generally speaking, on, in, in the film and TV and um, screen section, um, we now have a, an arm of our creative industries in Scotland called Screen Scotland, who are in regular contact with people who um, are operating in the US on behalf of the UK. Um, so our Scottish development arm have their selling points in terms of taking productions to Scotland, but we also work as part of the, the, the whole of the UK and obviously Los Angeles, home of Hollywood, um, is, the, is the key area for that. Um, there, is, there is a transition going on just now where the conversation is changing about how we do this and um, just last week when I was in Los Angeles I was speaking to somebody who works in this area and they were saying that the the sale of Scotland to Hollywood in terms of being able to take a movie there or a blockbuster there and produce it is actually more cost effective but you just have to be able to get the producers to understand that whether that's them physically going and visiting it or hearing word of mouth from trusted sources that it can be done. Um, an example of this was there was a film done um, a few years ago now with Brad Pitt in it called World War Z. It's film, it's shot as if it's in San Francisco, but it's actually filmed in Glasgow because Glasgow's street structure is very, very similar to San Francisco. So rather than going to San Francisco and trying to close down a major city, um, at, I can't even imagine what costs, they took it to Glasgow and filmed it as if it was shot there. And then actually, just to, just to give you another little anecdote, um, the latest Avengers film, which was partly filmed in Edinburgh, was done because one of the Russo brothers, who was one of the producers, daughter was at university in St Andrews. They went to St Andrews, fell in love with Scotland and decided to make their next movie there. So if you can get to Scotland, it actually sells itself. Coming back to, coming back to the small businesses um, and how you guys can get involved. Since I've been out here, I've seen a, I've seen a lot of things that have amazed me. Um, at the Seaside Highland Games last week, there was an Outlander tent, which proved to be one of the more popular tents. And um, they were enthusiastic, maybe borderline crazy. Um, <laughs> but uh, they, were, they were enthralled with what Outlander was. And they, they, they came together, united, to just talk about it and celebrate everything that it was. So these groups are establishing themselves and they're tapping into the markets off their own back. I know that there's a, there's a, a company, I'm sticking with Outlander theme here because it's a conversation I've had, but it, it, gives, you, it gives you an example. There's a company called um, Many Meanders, um, which is a Scottish-based company who basically jumped on the bandwagon of Outlander and now runs tourism tours bespoke to the sites in Scotland. So they've done, a lot of people have done this off their own back and then Visit Scotland have got behind them to help promote 
um, to, to the world. So if you have any ideas about how you want people to get involved, I'm happy to have that conversation. I'm not an expert um, uh, in this world um, in terms of how you can get involved in, in, in the screen and film side of things. But if you have any ideas or, or suggestions as to what you want to do, I'm happy to have that conversation and find the relevant people within the Scottish Government to give you um, a much better answer than I've managed to, to give you. Is that all right? Ron, can you, oh, there we go. Uh, well, Rory, I, I just wanted, it's not really a question, it's a comment, but I just wanted to make this comment by way of thanks for, for a really broad and thoroughly interesting and informative presentation. Um, your, your comment about Highland Games that was made from uh, our Californian friend, uh, I've seen just in Chicago, our Highland Games, how we can take some of the messages, and I'll refer to the, the very first objective about improving Scotland's international reputa reputation. And one of the points that was made in the Scotland is now film about Scotland being welcoming, and the statistic about um, refugees. I'm gonna tie all this together, I promise. Our Highland Games, the world champion women's athlete, is from Chicago and she's an African-American woman who has no Scottish heritage but just loves the sport. It was very unusual for us to have an African-American woman tossing the cable who is the world champion. So the TV stations in Chicago came along to cover this. And not only were we able to get great publicity for our games, but we were able to say that Scotland as a country has all these qualities of uh, equality, a belief in equality and inclusion, and all the things that uh, Rory outlined so powerfully. So I want to thank you, Rory, and uh, we can all play a part in helping Rory. We're all on the same team here. Rory has outlined how he can help us. And now, John, did I lose John? There you are. Uh, thank you again, John, for a wonderful presentation. Thank you, Gus. And let's give Rory a hand.